Okay, I thought I would show y'all how I do the little pumpkins. I'm just going to get one so that you could see what the finished ones look like. And here I've got the pumpkins already base coated. They're on the little flat back glass stones or pebbles or whatever you want to call them. And this is how I prep them. They're sealed with gray primer and then a light coat of a white primer. I do the back sides first and once those are dry then I flip them over and do the, the top side or the domed side. And then this is after I have base coated them. I then go back once this is dry and, and ready to be painted on. I add a coat of white acrylic once it dries, then I start my color, and uh, this orange is just from mixing a red and yellow kind of brush mixing it on my palette, so it's not really a specific orange color. I just make it up as I go, and they kind of vary. This is another one. It's just a little bit darker. These had just a touch more yellow on the brush, and so they're a little bit lighter. And then all I do is, using the side-loaded angle brush, and that's where I start with a damp brush, I dip just the tip into some paint and then blend it on my palette. And now the surface I work off of is a non-stick craft sheet. So even when that paint dries, it just wipes right off the, the sheet. And then I do a side-loaded, floated stroke to accent the ribs of the pumpkin. And I do as many as I need for the, the shape or the size of the, the pumpkin that I'm working on. And I just figured I'd go on and do two of these right quick. And the color that I'm using to do this, the shaded sections with is called Burnt Sienna. It is one of my all-time favorite rusty brown colors. Um, I use it in a lot of my pieces just because I like it and it is a good shadow color over the top of so many other colors so it's actually a good one to use um, and you can mix this with blue to create even a pretty grayish brown color depending on the blue that you're using too I use a lot of cobalt and ultramarine blue so now I'm going to do the exact same thing, exact same brush, except with using yellow. And we'll get that off there and just use that blending spot for the yellow. And we'll come in. And what we're going to do, this is called a back-to-back -back float. When you have one side that's dark and the other side that's light, it's a back-to-back -back float so that you're creating the shadow on one side and the highlight on the other. And I kind of skip around to do these so that the wet part of the brush doesn't lift off. A stroke that I've just made which is another reason that usually when I do the little pumpkins I have a couple of them going at one time so that I can swap back and forth to the different ones to add my color and see if I can hold this one up at a little bit of an angle and if I pull it too close to me like I would normally be working, it gets out of the camera range on the phone. So I try to keep it where it will get in the video, but that doesn't always make it good for me to see it. Let's see if we can do 
this one. And this is just how simple and easy this part of the pumpkin is to do. So I'm going to finish getting all of the ribs on the pumpkin done and then come back and show you how to do the rest of it.